just a minute. I'm going to give time to let people get in the room and get settled, and then we will um, get the webinar started. All right, we're gonna get um, going with tonight's webinar. So hello everyone and welcome to this month's Sycamore Families Fridays, which is Indiana State's Family Program's monthly virtual discussion series. So every month we bring you all a new discussion about a topic that we feel is important to our Sycamore families. My name is Debbie Barber and I am the Interim Director of New Student Transition Programs and Family Programs here at Indiana State. Um, and tonight for our webinar, we have our wonderful project success team here with us. We're going to be talking about interim grades and what that means for our students and then also some of those academic support services that are available to our students here at Indiana State. Um, I'm really excited to have you all here with us. We have a lot of panelists with us tonight, so that's really exciting. Um, I know we're going to have a great discussion. So right now, I'm going to hand it over to Steph Piercy. Um, and let her introduce herself, tell you a little bit about Project Success, um, and then we will let our panelists introduce themselves as well um, and tell you a little bit about the role that they play within Project Success, and then we will get started with our discussion. So Steph, do you want to get uh, started? Absolutely. Thanks, Debbie. Huh? Welcome, everyone. We are so excited for you to join us today. My name is Steph Piercy. I'm the Director of Success Programs here at Indiana State, and I work primarily, I work with Project Success which is our four-year student success um, support program. Um, and then I also work with our STARS program. But Project Success is a four-year program um, for, geared towards students um, who had a high school GPA of a 2.5 to a 3.25. Um, really kind of the, 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 the good student, um, that's the student that I was. Um, so kind of that middle of the road student um, who's fully capable of being successful. And we just wanna be there to support them for four years and, and offer them resources and help them learn how to navigate college. So um, we're focused on helping them transition, helping them build leadership skills, career readiness skills, um, and then be ready for when they graduate, be ready to kind of take on the world. Um, and I have an excellent team that I work with. I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. Um, but we will support our pro we support our project success students all four years. So they will have the complete force of our team behind them. So any questions they have, anytime they stumble, anytime they want to celebrate, we're here to, to work with them. So I'm going to go ahead and let them, uh, the rest of the team, introduce themselves. Adam, let's start with you since you're here. Hi, I'm Adam Wirt. I'm a, a academic advisor for Project Success, and I just started this year in August. Awesome, Olivia. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Finley. I'm an academic advisor for Project Success as well, and also um, an instructor for the Project Success course. Ms. Benita. Hello everyone, I'm Benita Stallings. I am a pioneer here at uh, ISU, and I uh, recently switched over from being an advisor for 20 plus years to uh, the career readiness coach. So I'm going to help the students to gather the skills and knowledge that they need to get jobs and, and hold on to them and find out what's all involved in uh, that aspect of making that education work for them through finding the right occupation. Joshua? Oh, I also teach a couple classes yeah. in part of the Project Success Program. Joshua? Good evening, everyone. I'm Joshua Elmore. I am an academic advisor with Project Success, uh, as well as an instructor. Dr. Foster? What was that? I said Dr. Foster. <laughs> We're trying to maneuver our, um, <laughs> what do you call these things? <laughs> speaking, speaking. <laughs> All right, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, 
I'm Lynn Foster. I'm the uh, community support specialist uh, in an interim position right now. I um, have been with the pre-nursing students for the last 20 years as director and then uh, the university college advisor, academic advisor until just this past August. And now I'm on board with Project Success. Um, I will help students if they are in need of outside things or even inside things such as book fees um, that uh, may be too much and maybe students didn't have enough um, to food um, mental health issues, you name it, anything outside of just academics, I should be able to help at least direct students to the correct places for the resources. Thank you. And last but not least, Ms. Allison. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Allison Hoig and I'm an academic advisor for Project Success and I also instruct a course. We have one more team member, Amy Harvey, who is also an academic advisor and an instructor, but she, <clears throat> excuse me, could not join us tonight. I do wanna note, cause I think it's important to note that um, Olivia, Ms. Benita, Joshua, Lynn, and myself are all alum of ISU. So we all have degrees from here. Um, and then we brought in fresh perspectives in Adam, Allison, and Amy, so that we can uh, make sure that we're staying fresh and bringing in new ideas to the system. So, I just wanted to point that out that we've all got our degrees from here and we all are sycamores to the core and then we've got some new sycamores that were we've brought in. So, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about interim grades. So the focus of tonight's um, webinar is about interim grades and interim grades are what most places refer to as midterm grades. So ISU does interim grades, which is at week five, whereas most places do midterm grades, which is at week a few years ago, we moved probably, uh, it's probably been 10 years now, we moved, the students wanted, so this was the Student Government Association initiative, they moved, they wanted to move grade checks earlier in this semester, so the students had more time to bring their grades up after they got that grade check. So we moved it to week five, so that the students had three additional weeks to bring up their grades if they were struggling in the class. And I just think that's a fantastic idea, and it, that was spearheaded by our Student Government Association. Um, they wanted more feedback, more timely feedback. Um, and so the, the university responded. So, um, so what we do kind of just to kind of give an overview and then we've got some questions and I'm gonna throw some questions at the team is when interim grades are reported, all of our academic advisors in the University College, which is all advising for first year students, um, we reach out to students who are struggling. So if they have deficient grades, which we consider a deficient grade a C minus or lower, um, and we calculate a GPA for them and based on their GPA, then we reach out to them and help them develop academic recovery plans. Um, and so our team has been working diligently um, for the past few weeks um, to get your students in. Um, and we students who are really struggling, we use what we call progressive outreach. Um, to get your students in, which means that we'll, we will push, pull, and drag them in if we have to. So we email them, we call them, we, we, call in, we contact their instructors and say, hey, we're trying to track down the student, could you bring them in? Um, we reach out to the folks in residential life and in the residence halls and ask them to, hey, could you go knock on their door and send them to see their academic advisor? So we do everything we can to try to get your student in so that we can um, help them develop an, a recovery plan so that if they are struggling in a class that we can help them figure out how to, how to change that. Part of the reason why we wanted to do this session was because we wanted your help with that as well. So as parents of these students, the first thing and the most important thing you can do if they're struggling with anything at ISU is send them to their academic advisor. Um, that is the number one thing. They, the, our advising team um, is the number one team person you can send them to. They have a question about anything. Um, and so we wanted to partner with you in terms of interim grades um, <clears throat> so that hopefully maybe if we're pulling them and you're pushing them, we'll get them <laughs> where they need to be. Um, so advisors, when a student comes to you and they are struggling in a class or we've seen in the interim grades that they're getting deficient grades, what are some of the things that you tell them initially to do to start that recovery process? 
and I don't care who goes, but someone, someone go. I'll start things off. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> so when, when students come in with deficient grades, the first thing we're gonna do is talk to them about and try and figure out what the, the issue is, right? I always think of it as like, if a student is struggling academically, usually there's some roadblock, some thing that's preventing them from succeeding. So that could be an issue where like, they never got the book for that class yet or didn't get the access codes to complete online assignments. It could be something like a student doesn't know how to study or, or, um, or take good notes in class. So we're figuring out like what's going on. But then the first thing, and this is just to start off and then I'll let others chime in, that we're always going to tell students to do is to talk to their professors. Um, I think that many students come in, their, especially their first year, and they see their, their professors as intimidating and they sort of feel scared about reaching out or especially if they're like a little ashamed that like the things haven't been going so well for them. So for us, the first big thing is always be talking to your professors because they want you to succeed, they want you to help. And that's also gonna help inform um, the next things that we're going to do if professors can say, this is your, where you're actually standing. So where a student can actually get a sense of, well, how can I do better in this course? Can I do better? What are my paths forward? Um, going off of what Adam said, I agree 100%. And then also something I am talking with students about is if they're struggling in a class, um, I want to know, are you struggling with staying organized, being time, you know, having good time management, or are you struggling with the content in the class? Um, you know, are you not understanding the material or have you had a hard time keeping track of when all your assignments are due? Because based on that, sometimes, sometimes they're missing a lot of assignments and that is what the issue is. So going back to what Adam said, reaching out to the instructor and we as advisors help students craft those emails too, or how to have that conversation. Um, so reaching out about making up missed assignments, or do we need to focus on getting you uh, help on content? Um, so one of our science, uh, science help center, our writing center, something like that is something we try to decipher as well. Wow, um, those are great comments. And I agree with my colleagues there. The only thing that I would add is the addition of the Center for Student Success, where they have an opportunity for learning coaching. Um, you know, there's supplemental instruction that's also down there. So the first meeting when it comes to interim grades for me is a lot of uh, probing and trying to find out, as my colleagues said, you know, what is the reason for the deficient grades? A lot of our students, um, you know, this is their first time in college. This is the first semester. And in the first couple of weeks, it still feels kind of like summer camp. And it doesn't really hit them until interim grades when you get a solid look at what the grades are that they have in each class that, ooh, I need to make some changes. So it was just a matter of probing, um, reassuring them that you know they're they are in a situation that they can get better and they can they can um, grow from this point if the grades are deficient and it when things are good praise them you know they need they don't need to be knocked down all the time they also need to be praised so they may have a couple of bad grades and a couple are good congratulate them on the good let's figure out how we can raise everything up and uh, you know hopefully they've got enough time to do that but we're here as a resource to help them Students almost uh, also may be um, struggling with motivation or wanting to attend their classes. Um, so they have problems with attendance. Um, and so just starting that conversation off with them, you'll kind of figure out what's going on. Um, we do have a counseling center on campus that we refer students to go to, even if they're just stressed um, or maybe they think that they're depressed and they are not sure if college is for them. Um, we do try to get them in um, with the counselors that we have on campus. Um, for me, if they're struggling with motivation, I ask them why they are here. Um, usually they're wanting to pursue a degree for a particular reason, you know, um, they want to make their family proud or, um, you know, they went through something that they want to give back to their community for. And I always encourage them to remember their reason for being here when they're having problems with motivation for getting out of bed or just going to class. So just having that initial 
uh, conversation typically drives to where the resource is that we'll refer them to. One of the questions, oh, Vanita, did you wanna go? You go. Yeah, I, I was just gonna throw something in here. Um, the, at the times that I was doing the advising too, one of the things that I would all, also ask is, how's your health? You know, are you getting enough rest? Are you eating? You know, because all of those things can contribute to their success. If they're, you know, not getting the proper rest, if they're not eating, you know, a nutritious breakfast or lunch before going into their classes and they're tired, then, you know, that's going to have a detrimental effect on how they're doing. So, you know, the mom in me wants to make sure that, you know, they're taking care of themselves and, and doing, you know, what needs to be done uh, health-wise. And I would say um, my um, first two questions would be, or statements to students would be, are you managing your money and are you managing your time? And then that starts all the other conversations um, for, you know, do you have all your books, all the access that you need in order to be successful? And why do you think you made these grades? Um, is there something else going on besides uh, college life that may be affecting you. They may be concerned about um, something at the home that they don't have control over here. And, uh, you know, the parents are the best resources really for motivation for most students. I've, I've found out that to be. And they don't want to disappoint you as parents. And so um, it's, it's very important to connect together. And I, um, you know, a lot of times we'll ask more pertinent questions to see what else might be going on, um, such as, you, you know, was already stated about they may have something going on that um, is really affecting their, their performance. And then I ask also, uh, especially, you know, with the nursing students, do you feel that this is the right fit for you? Because nursing's a passion. You have to have the passion before the money. Yes, it's good money. But then are you very strong in science and math? You do, do you think that this is the major that you really want to um, pursue? And usually by interim grades, they will notice, hey, anatomy and chemistry and statistics. Well, I think I need to change my mind. So we then explore other majors that might be possible in the, in the um, medical field, possibly, or health field. And then to let them know, you know, they, they need to find out what their niche is. It may not be what they think they started out with, but you have to have the passion and the ability to do it. So we, we talk about that conversation and then go further. You know, a lot of times you may find the students having some other issue going on. So that's the first thing I try to start with. Are you managing your money and time? Tell me about that. And then we delve more into uh, more serious situations. Thank you, everyone. So I noticed we have a, a question in the chat, and I think that this was a popular question when people were registering is, how do I see my students' grades? Um, I have, and in the chat, they talk about proxy access. So the first thing that has to happen before you can have any access to your students' grades is they have to give you proxy access. Um, they can sign up through that through their MyISU portal. Their academic advisor can absolutely help them set that up. They have to give you a passphrase that you can use. Um, <clears throat> and then once they've set that up, uh, Debbie has put the website with more information about proxy access in the chat. Um, but they have to give you permission because it's all up based on them. Now, one of the things I want to, that Debbie reminded me, so I want to make sure I share this with you guys, to the parents, is they can go in there and change your access level at any time. So if they gave you proxy access to begin with and now they have bad grades and you go in and try to check their grades, um, if you no longer have access, that's a conversation you need to have with your students. Um, so proxy access is the first step. They'll give you a passphrase. There's not really any place where you can go look at their grades, but you can contact their advisor. And if you have proxy access and you have to their grades and you have a passphrase, 
and we can see that they've given you access to their grades and we can share those with you. Um, so that's kind of how that happens. There's not really a place where you can go look them up. I would encourage your first step to be, have that conversation with your students um, and have them show, your, show you their interim grades. Um, they can take a screenshot and send it to you. Um, they have their official reporting on their portal where they can check their interim grades. They can also check them at the bottom of their MySAM um, and your students should know what that is if you don't. Um, <clears throat> and then they can also show you their Blackboard grades. And I would encourage you to have them send you screenshots of those um, so that you can see for yourself. Um, but if your student doesn't do that, then you can call us and if you have proxy access to their grades. Now, they can give you proxy access to some things and not all things. So you have to make sure that you have proxy access to their interim or their midterm grades. Um, and if you do that and call us, then we can share that. So. Yeah, I'm just going to chime in real quick here, Steph, yep. and just emphasize, re-emphasize what Steph was talking about with proxy access is very specific in terms of what students can give you access to so they can kind of pick and choose um, who their you know proxies are and as well as what their proxies have access to. Um, so that's completely dependent upon the student. The student is in the driver's seat in terms of what that looks like, um, as well as they're in the driver's seat, like Steph mentioned, when they can take that away from you at any point um, and you're not going to know until you try to access that information or you call their advisor um, you know, to check on their interim grades or whatnot and then you no longer have access to that. Um, the only way the proxy is notified is if you are completely taken off as a proxy. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind and as Steph mentioned again, um, making sure that you're having those ongoing conversations with your student um, so that you all are staying on the same page and something like that doesn't happen and you're taken by surprise and taken off guard. It's so really important to make sure that you are communicating um, with your student and your student is communicating with you so you are all on the same page. Yes, because it's so, I gotta be completely honest, for our team, it's embarrassing if you call us and say, I have proxy access, and then we have to tell you that I'm sorry, you no longer do have proxy access to that. So um, I would encourage you before you call us to talk to your student, make sure you do still have access to that. Um, one of the questions that came up um, when you were um, registering was, how do you encourage your students to seek help? Um, and so I'm gonna let the advisors chime in on this a little bit too, but one of the things that I do it, cause I also teach one of the classes. So I have some of students in class. And one of the things I always try to tell students as we're moving forward in the class is that grades are value neutral. So getting bad grades does not make you a bad person. Getting good grades does not make you a good person. Um, they're value neutral. And so what we wanna do is we just wanna know where you are. Um, and I also tell them that you're not expected to get all A's at this point. You're not expected to know everything and your work is not expected to be perfect. In fact, it's probably not going to be because you're a student and the student learning process is that you try, we give you feedback, you make corrections, you try again. Um, <clears throat> and so by taking some of that pressure off by having those conversations um, helps them feel more comfortable seeking help. We also are very, very, very intentional in letting them know that we are here to help them and not judge them and we're not their parents. We really just want to help them figure things out. So advisors, can you chime in on kind of some of the conversations you have with your students to encourage them to seek help and seek resources on campus? One thing that I really stress, especially when talking about interim grades um, or any deficient grade is it's not necessarily about how you got to this point, but it's about what you do now. So, you know, um, because it can be discouraging when you go on and you don't get the grades that you wanted. You know, I think students really feel disappointed in themselves. They feel they're nervous about their family knowing that they're not doing well. Um, you know, they, they want better for themselves for the most part. So when they see those grades, it can take them down a notch and I think feel disappointing or even shameful, like Adam was saying earlier. So I think encouraging them by saying, you know, if you're motivated now, like you can make a change in these grades, 
Like, let's start with baby steps. Um, I talk about how like checking things off the list is satisfying. So like, let's start with where, what's going on in these classes? Where can we go from here? Are we missing assignments? Do we need help with the content? What's going on? Can we reach out to the instructors for some help? Um, and just kind of help them game plan it. And I know in the past, at least with interim conversations, I've had students saying, okay, I feel better about this. I think they feel like less of doom, you know, like that this is, I'm stuck like this, but I can actually turn this around now. And, and I, you know, I say like, we're here to help you. We're here to support you. Um, like I said earlier, we'll help you draft the email to your professor. How do you have that conversation? What can I say? Um, so those sorts of things to let them know that they can turn it around. And we do have resource centers and things. And most, I also stress that most of their instructors want to see them succeed. They want to help them. They, they don't want to give Fs. They don't want to, um, they don't want to see them fail. So reaching out and letting the instructors know what's going on. Maybe I've been struggling with my mental health. Maybe I've had trouble staying organized or there's something going on at home, whatever it may be. I'm, I always tell students, you have to advocate for yourself in college because instructors don't know what's going on unless you tell them what's going on. So I'm going off on a tangent here, but basically trying to encourage them that they can turn this around, that it can happen and that we're here to help them along the way. And even if that's in baby steps. Yeah, I really like what Olivia said. Um, I always talk to students about the like need to look forward and be constructive and how looking back too much, if, if it can be helpful to look back and learn it at mistakes that, from mistakes that you've made, but when you sort of become obsessive about it, then you become sort of paralyzed and you can't move forward. The other thing that I'll add to sort of, right, because we're always trying to normalize the struggle, right, because like we see so many students, right, like everyone feels like, oh wow, everyone around me is doing great and it's just me who's struggling. To try to get at that, I often talk about, you know, instead of thinking of yourself as something where like you're going through this difficult time in college and it's just a struggle and it's just all these bad things, I try to think about like accomplishment, right, like any major important accomplishment is something that's not easy, because if it was easy, it wouldn't be a big accomplishment. And if it's not easy, then you should expect to struggle for at least a time. So I, oftentimes students come in and, and, and sometimes it, that feels like they've got a bit of whiplash because they expected they were good in high school and they, they're struggling suddenly in college. And so I try to remind them like, hey, if this was easy, like it would almost not be worth doing, you know? And it's something that's really worth doing that's really gonna be an accomplishment is going to be difficult for a while. There's gonna be a time when you're not good at it, but that doesn't mean you can't get good at it. So having that, you know, what we would talk about as a growth mindset. Um, so it's not just, oh, I'm bad at this, I struggle, I can't do math or whatever. Um, to say, no, like you, you're in a certain place, but like it's gonna be tough for you, but you can get better. And that's sort of the, the big thing we try to drive folks towards. So I would like to add that the, one of the things that I really love about Project Success is how we start right off a week before classes begin with Bridge Week. And I'm gonna quote our Dean, the University College Dean, with the first thing that she tells the students that participate in Bridge Week is action cures fear. And fear is probably you know, the number one thing that we see in students when we have them come in for those uh, interim grade meetings. Like you can even see it on their face. It could possibly be the first time the entire semester that they're talking to their advisor. So there's that fear. It's interim grades, that's fearful. The grades may be deficient, that's fearful. So it's a, a win to get them in, uh, which is awesome. And you can see it on their face when they sit down and you could, you could feel the fear. But as you start to talk through things, that starts to change. And my goal is I like to see at the end of the, of the meeting that their personality is opened up at that point in time. And another thing about what we do in Project Success, starting off with Bridge Week and that, you know, this continues on for the entire four years, is we put resources in front of them. People on campus that would be uh, the go-to people that they would need to talk about as far as our talk to, like counseling center, math, uh, 
lab, the writing center, like we put these people in front of them and continuously throughout our class, there'll be uh, times where we'll have presenters from different organizations on campus to come and speak to them. So hopefully they, it normalizes as, as Adam was talking about, it, it puts a face to some of the names that we spout off all the time and the emails that they get. Well, sometimes it's nice for them to actually know that there's a person behind that. And um, what I love doing is actually making that connection with a student and taking them to a resource where like if they need to go to the counseling center, I will walk them over there. If they need to go down to the Center for Student Success, I will walk them down to the Center for Student Success and make that introduction, make sure that they sign up. Uh, those are the things that uh, we enjoy doing. I would also share <clears throat> excuse me, that one of the things that we work very hard on doing is, is staying in constant communication with your students so that <clears throat> they know where they can go for help. And we're constantly offering resources and um, ideas for things they can do. Um, our dean, Dean Mall, she sends them emails um, every few weeks just to check in with them. She sends them little notes about herself, um, about her dog. Um, just to humanize herself because she has this title of Dean. Um, and so that's what all, a lot of us do too, is try to find ways to more humanize ourselves and our resources, our partners and colleagues on campus so that students feel more comfortable coming to us and asking us for help. Um, that's why most people, most, almost everyone calls me Steph Piercy and I refuse to let students call me Ms. Piercy because I want them to see me as a a human being and not as someone who's, you know, an administrator. Um, so we, we put a lot of effort into that. Um, so one of the other questions we got friends is um, tutoring resources on campus. So um, one of the things that we do on campus that we started this year, mainly because specifically to address some of the COVID, um, some of the COVID learning loss that we've been afraid of is our Center for Student Success started offering learning coaches. Um, and that's basically teaching students how to learn in college um, and teaching them how to study. So the learning coaches sit down with them and assess how they learn best, what they're struggling with in their classes, and then help them develop plans on how to study. But do you guys want to offer one of your favorite resources on campus to send students to? Um, something I've been sending students to on campus, I've been working with a lot of pre-professional students um, who are heavy in the science courses. So we have a science lab in our, we actually have a science building on campus too, which is houses all the science courses, of course. Um, but that has a science lab in it. Um, I think the only science it doesn't, uh, help with right now really is biology, but I know students in chemistry and um, I don't have anyone in physics right now, but I know they help with physics as well, but they have been really um, happy with it in the science lab. So I've had students going there and then we have a math lab too. That's a really big one um, that students have been going to. It's open a lot. Um, I think they have a lot of resources in there. So um, those are two really big ones we use a lot. Yeah, I recommend the math lab. I know some of your students may already be required to go to the math lab if they're in math 035. Um, but if they're still struggling in the class, I tell them to go um, more and even during a time that it's not busy so that they can get more one on one help, um, especially because they're open Sunday through Friday. Um, another great resource we have on uh, campus is the writing center. So if your students are struggling with um, maybe grammar or um, proof editing their uh, papers that they have or just kind of stuck with how they want to create the paper. They're obviously not going to help you write the paper, but they were they will be there to help your student maybe with writer's block or something like that. Um, they're a really great resource.
Yeah, I, those are all great resources. I'm not exactly sure if I could uh, think of something else to add other than um, we have a fantastic uh, career center. So when I'm talking with students and they maybe talk, they're expressing that they need help with like maybe finding a job or something like that. Um, I always suggest career center first because they are going to uh, try to find something for the student that's on campus. And there's some great benefits to working on campus if, if that's what you need to do. Um, they start off paying more than minimum wage, which is fantastic, and they will work around the schedule of the student. Uh, we find that a lot of students that are working off campus, well, there's no incentive for those employers to listen or look at their class schedules. Uh, school is separate from that business. So sometimes when students come and they're having trouble trying to reconcile work and school and everything, um, that's always something that I suggest is the Career Center is one. And as we are talking and, and getting to know each other, uh, if the student could be a member of an affinity group, there's always the different affinity groups, multicultural services and programming, uh, African-American Culture Center, LGBTQ Center, La Casita, there's all sorts of different affinity groups. And in those groups, students can find students like themselves, maybe in the same major, and they can form uh, study groups, relationships with other students that think and, and live the, the sort of life that the student is uh, engaged in as well. So man, yeah, there's, there's so many different uh, opportunities to help students and show them the different resources that we have on campus. And I would like to highlight, because Debbie put it in the chat, but I do want to say it out loud. All of the resources we're talking about for your students are absolutely free. So you, it's covered by their tuition. There's no extra fee for any of that. So they just show up. Um, and like Allison was talking about the writing center, I also wanted to add, if you have a student who's not a strong writer um, or they're lost on their assignment, they, if they have a writing assignment, they can just take the assignment over to the writing center and they will help them figure out how to do it. They will sit down with them and the assignment and walk through the entire process with them. They'll talk about, well, here's how you go and do research and here's how you write an, an outline and here's how you do your first draft. And then they can go back multiple times and meet about that assignment. Like Allison said, they won't write it for them, but they can be there for them every step of the way. So if you do have a student who does find writing challenging, strongly encourage them to go to the writing center. So one of the other questions, we did get a question about, will students be enrolled in similar classes next semester? So the answer to that is, it depends. So um, students start fresh new classes in the spring. Um, so, but it depends on their major. It depends on how they do the semester. It depends on the prereqs that are required for classes they wanna take. So there's a lot of things. Um, and we're gonna do a, 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 new, a session in November, right Debbie, on registration. So we can, we'll, we'll go over all of that in our November session. So make sure you watch for communication from Debbie about that. Um, so we'll be back in November to talk to you specifically about spring classes, um, but it all kind of just, it kind of depends. Um, they will in the next couple of weeks start getting communication from the team um, about setting up a, a, an appointment, an initial appointment, or go, come to a group session to learn about registration and what that process is. Um, so tell, make sure you're encouraging them to check for emails from their advisor. Um, so that's one of the things I really wanna stress um, is if they don't know who their advisor is, there's no reason why they shouldn't because they've been getting a ton of emails from them. Um, but if for some reason you ask them, who's your academic advisor? And they don't, can't answer you, it's in their portal. So have them go to their student, the, their ISU portal, go to the student self-service tab on the right-hand side at the bottom. It will tell them who their academic advisor is. And they can click on it right there and email them directly. Um, so if your student doesn't know or they can't answer, if you ask them that question, and I strongly encourage you to ask them that question, um, make sure they know who it is. Um, but if they don't know, they can go check there. Um, and uh, our team is very specific in terms of who we deal with, but that's the same for all advisors across campus. It's all in the same place. They can click there. They can um, email them directly from that place. So, and all, all first-year advisors, all first-year student advisors, um, all will be reaching out in the next couple of weeks to um, start talking about registration, make sure they understand how to look at their, their MyFam and all that. But we'll talk about that next month. 
that's next month's topic. Today is, is more about grades. Um, so um, do you guys have words of wisdom? So the, the, one of the other questions we, that we talked about, we talked about is how to help their student through the middle part of the semester. Um, this is, and, and that's a fantastic question because this is the time of the semester where they're busy. So their coursework has increased significantly since the, from the beginning. Um, hopefully they're getting involved on campus, they're getting engaged on campus, they're making friends, they're part of groups. All of that gets busy right now. So advisors and team, uh, Dr. Foster, Ms. Anita, what tips do you have for parents and family support systems on how to help their students through this part of the semester? Um, one thing is, you know, Thanksgiving break right around the corner. So something always to look forward to is that nice break in a semester, get to go home and be with family and recharge. So like right now, you know, that's only about a month away. So encouraging a student, like keep pushing until then. Um, I agree with Steph. I think this is a point in time where the weather starts getting a little worse it starts getting gloomier I like to say that the honeymoon of college is over and like the reality check comes where like oh I have a lot of work to do and I'm busy and this is a little stressful now um so encouraging them to you know keep try to keep them motivated and just encouraging words as parents in general you know like you can do this um also you can always refer them to us like if they're feeling a little down or if you notice maybe that they're feeling a little down and you feel like they could use a pick me up say why don't you contact your advisor and just have a conversation about it um, because we're happy to kind of help lift them back up or connect them to a resource um, and then but I also do think the breaks in the semester it's helpful like you know keep just keep going push push it through for a month take it week by week then you get a whole week off then you only come back for like two weeks and then you get like a month off. <laughs> so um, just kind of encouraging them and, you know, like work hard, a reward is coming, that sort of thing. Mine would be, can you hear me okay? Uh -oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, well, I have a yes, little echo. Yes, Lynn. All right, so I would encourage parents, please tell your students, especially now until the end of the semester, attend classes. Please attend classes. It's so extremely important. Yes, 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 yes. Um, when the weather starts getting bad, so it starts getting rainy, it starts getting colder, it starts getting gloomy. They're less likely to wanna to get out of their dorms. They're less likely to wanna leave the house. They're less likely to wanna to walk across campus. So they're get, they get to that point where they, their instructor has said, well, you can miss so many times before you get in trouble. And they start taking advantage of those times. Um, way you can help with that, back me up guys, make sure that they have a way that they're tracking their attendance because every class has a different attendance policy. So it's different for every class. There's not a universal one. Um, so they need to make sure that for each class, they know how many times they can miss and how many times they've already missed before they decide to miss a class again. Um, I would love to be able to just blanket say, don't miss class, but they're going to. So the more successful way to navigate that is to teach them to track that. Um, because I think a lot, I used to work with a probation program and a lot of the reasons why students end up on academic probation is they don't they fail they can fail a class due to attendance. Um, so if they miss so many times, then they automatically fail because the instructor has set a limit on that class that if you fail this many classes, then you can't can't possibly catch up. Um, and so they can fail a class due to attendance, and a lot of times students do because they don't realize that, and they don't realize that a doctor's note may not count um, towards that. Um, the instructor has complete authority to say, thank you for the doctor's note. I'm sorry you haven't been feeling well, um, but that's why I gave you six times that you can miss my class. And because you chose to miss six times, five times without a doctor's note, now you're at six. So that's a struggle for students. Um, and so encouraging them to make sure that they're keeping track of that. 
Um, I'm sure I know that all parents tell their students to go to class, go to class, go to class. Um, we tell them that, but that's a message that needs to continue happening. Benita, did you wanna chime in? Yes, I, I, I just wanted to add that another way that students can help their, their uh, I mean, parents can help their students is to quiz the student on what it is that they learn have learned thus far. What information did they come out of their classes knowing now that they didn't know before? Can they teach you what they've learned thus far? And then just encourage them to let them know that they're on a journey. They're on a journey that hopefully is gonna lead them to a place where they're gonna become experts in their field. But this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning and you know, stick with it. Okay, maybe the midterm grades weren't quite where they wanted them to be, but it's not the end of the road. You, you now understand that whatever you were doing up to that point isn't working. So kick it to the curb, don't go back and pick it up and think that it's going to you know, work. So you know, learn from there. What do you need to do differently? Ask them, you know, what caused you to be in this situation? You know, did you reach out to your instructors? Did you go for tutoring? Did you talk to your advisors? You know, all of those things are important and necessary. And I think the reinforcement, not only from, you know, us here at, at, at ISU, but from the parents is going to help. You know, I, I always have told my students, you know, at some point, your parents want to be your, your cheer squad. They wanna be in the audience at graduation cheering you on. You know, I, I tell them, you know, we as parents, we love bragging rights. We love to be able to say that my baby's gonna be this or my baby's gonna be that. And we want them to be the best. So, you know, I, I think that when you have the reinforcements all the way around and encourage that student to know, okay, Whatever didn't work, don't go back and pick it up. Let's try something different and see the results. Because I, I can guarantee you, if they buy into what it is that they're here for, and they understand the, the benefits and the privilege that they have, most of them are going to turn around. Most of them are going to turn around and see how this is affecting and gonna be beneficial to them. So parents, I just say, hang in there, encourage them, you know, have those conversations, you know, however they have to be, but just let them know this is, this is new territory. This is new for them. You know, I, I, I always tell them that this isn't grade 13 and the things, if you learned everything that you needed uh, in high school, there would be no need for colleges anywhere. So, you know, this is a learning process. Take baby steps if, if you need to, but also make sure that you're reaching out for assistance and, and help wherever needed. I would also like to add that um, my words of wisdom to parents is to be understanding. I had um, parents that did not go to college and it was very stressful during the middle to the end of the semester. And I got in a lot of arguments with my mom because we're very close, but she didn't understand that, you know, I'm very stressed out because I have all these exams and these tests and essays to write that, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm struggling to get it all done, right? And so just being understanding that they're going to be stressed out right now and just to um, be supportive during the time that, um, during this time. Also to add on to the attendance piece, your students may be getting um, absences based on attending late. So that could be another reason why they may be saying they're attending classes, but if they're attending late, some professors will count them absent. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Attending late could also mean they're sitting in class with their head buried in their phone or they've got their headphones on and music is blaring. Um, yeah, all those things to, will add up. But I have something very practical to add to what can parents do. And I, 
from my experience when I was an undergrad, especially my first semester, the one point of the year where I felt the most stressed out and down basically around this time of year, around midterms, um, I happened to get a care package sent from my grandma and it had all my favorite stuff in it. Home, she made uh, a chocolate sheet cake, which was my favorite cake that I ever had in my life is from my grandma. Uh, you know, uh, anything that, I'm a big sports fan. So she put in like uh, Colt socks and I had a new stocking for my favorite, from the pacers in there. Like care packages will be a lifesaver for some students. It reminds them of home. Even something as practical as instead of taking a photo of Fluffy or, or Minnie, their favorite pet, actually take a picture and maybe frame it and send it in the care package so they can set it up on their desk. You know, something that when they're studying, they can look at and it's not necessarily their phone because everything is digital now, something tangible for them to look at and that reminds them of home. I, you know, you when we talk with students, sometimes we get these little nuggets from them about uh, something from home that they connect to that's so striking and important to them that they mention it to their academic advisor. Uh, I wish there was a great way for us to give that information to parents and let them know, hey, this could be a great way to just give the student a little push, little things like that. I, I think everything else that the, the panel has been talking about was great, but I couldn't help but think about when I got my chocolate sheet cake from grandma my freshman year, and uh, it basically like set me up for the rest of the semester, other than my fraternity brothers who ate half of it, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> Josh, that's absolutely lovely. Go ahead, Adam, sorry. I was just gonna underline 100% what Josh said um, and sort of add that like for students, especially when you're in the like the doldrums of the semester, like finding little like moments and points of joy and like happiness in the midst of that is what really can like help you get through things. So sometimes that might be like physical, tangible things are amazing, um, but it can also be, it can come in lots of different forms. Like maybe it's, you know, giving the student like a uh, 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 special conversation with someone who if, if if you they like to talk regularly like making sure that they're having a chance to talk or or go and do the thing that they enjoy doing right like if they there's a sport that they like doing or they like doing some sort of art or whatever activity making sure that they've got a place on campus that they're finding to actually do that like whatever it is that gives them joy is what's going to help make it easier like week in and week out to keep going and getting through. And the physical things are like, I feel like the most obvious, amazing way of doing that. Um, but there's also like other little things that um, you can help ask, you know, ask your students like, well, what are you doing? Like you really love to play basketball at home. Um, you're not doing, are you, are you involved in anything there? Or are you involved in like the rec options? Um, those sorts of things can, can really help produce a little bit of extra fuel um, when it's getting darker out. Perfect. I just have a, I know we're getting close to the end. So I just have a couple other things I want to touch on before we end. The first thing is we talk a lot about homesickness with students and how they're going to miss home and how homesickness is cyclical and it happens after any time they come home, they're going to come back and be homesick. But one of the things we don't talk a lot about um, that I try to talk to students about in my class is part of the reason why they struggle is because they upended their entire life and moved someplace they knew nothing about and they have to live with strangers they know nothing about. Um, and so that's one of the biggest reasons why students struggle. And we talk about moving to college and that it's they're gonna get homesick, but we don't talk about how different college is from high school. Because not only are they starting a new school system, a new school cycle, um, this higher ed is way different from high school. There's nothing in high school that prepares them for the structure of higher ed. Um, so that's new. They're living someplace, most of them with a stranger. Um, even if they're living with a friend, they didn't live with that friend before and living with your friend is way different than just hanging out with your friend. They're in an unknown place. So they're living in a town they don't know. They're living on a campus that they barely know. They're learning it, but all of that compounds to a place where 
it's not just that they're starting a new school. It's not the 13th grade, like Ms. Benita said. They upended their life to come here. And I don't think that we give them enough credit for that and for the bravery that takes and for um, holding stuff together and, and just navigating that process. Um, if you've ever moved someplace strange in your adult life, you know how hard that is in a, as an adult just moving to a new house, what a struggle it is, how stressful it is just moving to a new house, let alone upending your life and moving to a place where you know no one. And even your family and your support system is not there for you. Because typically if we move, we've got our support. So that's one of the things I, I like to make sure that we give them credit for. Um, but the other last thing I want to mention um, is we talked a lot about resources on campus. We talked about the Writing Center, the Math Center. We talked about our Center for Student Success and, and our Learning Coaches. We talked about the Science Tutoring Center. Um, one of the resources we didn't touch on that I want to make sure that I mention is our Accessibility Resource Office, which is in our student Center for Student Success. So if your student struggles with test anxiety, if they have mental health situations going on, if they had an IEP in high school, we have an accessibility on uh, accessibility resource office on campus that I encourage you to encourage your students to talk to. Um, Ms. Hope is amazing. She cares a lot about our students. Um, a lot of times we have students struggle because they don't want to go to the accessibility resource office because they had an IEP in high school and got treated differently. But here, nobody knows but Ms. Hope um, what, what's going on with your student. So if your student is someone who struggles with some, with some of those kind of issues, test anxiety is a big one for our students. Um, students with ADHD, students with depression, students with, who had other, any kind of IEP and injury, they've been in an accident, they're temporary, temporarily disabled, they've, hurt, they've broken a leg, any of that can go to the Accessibility Resource Office and we can help with that. So keep that in the back of your mind for something that happens and, and, and as a really good resource. Um, for your students. So any other last words of wisdom or Debbie, are there any other questions that we didn't get to that we need to talk about? I think we have covered all the questions. I do want to mention real quickly that I did when Josh was talking about care packages. It um, reminded me about our letters from home that um, we do for our students um, that typically in the past we've done um, hard copies of these letters, but we've turned them electronic um, because of COVID and everything else. So I did put the link um, into the chat box. So if you want to click that link, it'll take you to um, just a short form you can fill out and you can write your student a letter from home and we will um, deliver those to them um, with, you know, before the end of the semester. So if you want to write some encouraging words to your students, um, please take time to do that and we will um, deliver those to them. And um, it's always a nice little surprise for our students when they get those um, in the mail. So, but I think that is it. We have covered all of our questions. Um, we do not have any new questions in the uh, chat box or anything. So we are gonna wrap it up. We are um, a little after six now. So I think we've had a great discussion tonight, a lot of really good information um, that we covered, a lot of resources for our students that we've talked about. So I wanna thank our panelists for being here tonight and joining us and spending your Friday um, evening here with us to talk with our families and um, talk about ways that they can best support their students. I want to thank everyone at home for watching and being here with us tonight. Um, if you did submit a question and for some reason we did not get to it or we missed it, um, please let us know and then we will follow up with you um, to make sure that we get that answered and to make sure that you feel confident um, after tonight's discussion. Um, as well, I do want to make sure you all know that we did record this webinar tonight and we will send out that recording um, to all of our um, families who registered to attend as well as we will post that recording on the Family Programs YouTube page as well. So you all can go in and access that at any time. If you want to rewatch anything or you missed any part of it, you can go back and you can access that. Um, but again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to chatting with you all again soon. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.